talking about the risk related to the digital transformation, about the predators, about the data-rich society that can be used by industry or government. Uh, but what is the most important opportunity that people get when they get into the um, digital world? I think the, it's this, to go back to kind of the mythological figure of the avatar, this figure of transformation and this ability to extend one's reach and to kind of manifest change in the world. I think that that people are able to that connect with each other and do exciting, wonderful things like, I don't know, play games together, build things together, share information, that we have a strong sense of connectivity with groups and affiliation that might be far from us, we're already doing something that is either kind of the precinct of gods in terms of being able to move across the world in this way or of the kind of avatar science fiction fantasy of the, of the movie. But in our daily lives we're actually doing some of this and once it becomes part of your daily life it might not seem extraordinary but some of these very small messages of connectivity are I think make a profound difference in what our what our lives feel like and to be able to uh, uh, I don't know to work and to live like that I think is quite amazing even though the kind of dark sides of it, the bullying, the trolling, and all the rest of it, the spam, it doesn't go away, but we need to look at the big picture, this, the combination of the different forces. So from what you're saying, we have like this big private space of virtual worlds where people just connect and exchange and meet, but we have also the activism part as we talk about WikiLeaks but uh, uh, and of course um, um, this is an opportunity as well to to make policy and, and from government point of view uh, an opportunity to engage people um, do you think that we need some kind of policy action or legislation that incite people to be more participative to make their virtual space more public spaces than, than just private uh, and what more about the society than themselves. No, I think there's a great opportunity here and this kind of, this idea of um, this mission around policy 3.0 that it involves a greater level of participation and that it exploits network connectivity. The experiment around this was something like the Futurium where people are part of um, generating a vision about, well, what can our future be? And sharing ideas, uh, creating dialogue there. This is a very early kind of experimental stage around, it's not purely social, nor is it um, uh, there's a possibility here of consequences that you can help influence what your government will do. There's a, a, an invitation for kind of participatory democracy that is not uh, framed almost just exclusively by who you vote into parliament or who you lobby to get out of parliament, but within that it's not just lobbyists but citizens like you and I who can help influence the character of what's going on. So we'll see. I mean, I don't know how far this goes. I don't know what happens in terms of government has process. Um, do you want policy to be generated in a, uh, in a very, in a f totally flat democratic way where it's just the popular vote? No, we have 
protections built into how government runs and how policy is made so it is not simply the rule of the most or a mob rule. Yet, to take this moment to recognize shifts in how people are communicating societal shifts around this stuff and to experiment with ways that policy and participation and citizenship and public can be understood in our near future, I think this is definitely the right thing to be doing now. Thank you.